I'm Brigitte Walter. I'm head of BMLD Lighting Design, uh, Designing with Light. I'm the founder and design principal of the company. Um, I got into lighting a long time ago by chance, uh, as I think many of us did. I was doing an internship uh, in an architecture office and we were working on an office building uh, here in Barcelona, Spain, uh, that had a lot of daylight issues. And that's how I started to know a little bit about light and space and I got really interested in it. Um, started looking where I could find out more about it back then. I mean, these are the 90s in Spain. Um, there was very little going on over here. I mean, if not to say almost nothing. And I found uh, Parsons School of Design uh, that offered a master's in lighting design. Uh, so I applied, got accepted and moved to New York where I stayed for 10 years. Um, I started my career at Horton Leeds and Branson Partnership in New York City. Uh, so those are my mentors also. <laughs> um, Barbara being one great mentor, actually. Um, and then in 2001, I decided to move back to Barcelona and um, started the studio. Back then, as I was saying, I mean, it was literally a desert in terms of lighting. There was nothing going on here. So it was tough. Um, me and some colleagues that were starting at that point um, started also a master's program uh, here in Barcelona, an association. So we worked on many things at the same time. We carry out lighting projects for permanent architectural spaces. I mean, the main word for us is permanent. Uh, we do some temporary installations, but it's not really what we do. I mean, most of our work is within permanent. The way we do it is we analyze the project from the spatial and functional point of view and propose a lighting approach that integrates within architecture, that enhances the space, fulfills the functional requirements of the same while complying with regulations, as we all know, <laughs> both economically and energy-wise. This implies the creation of a percep perceptive strategy through lighting systems that are integrated with an architecture that help us develop our functions while emphasizing the space, its depth, accents, contrast, and materials. I tend to think that a lighting designer is a key element within the design team. The way I explain it when I teach uh, students that are starting lighting design is to think of us as an or within an orchestra, where the architect is obviously the director, and we might be the transverse flute, for example. Of course, the patriature can be played without us, or with another instrument. However, the outcome and connection to the observer will not be the same. So, translating this into specifics, the lighting designer's main task is to work with the human perception in order to achieve the given objective within a peculiar space. Providing lux levels, color temperature, optics, picture type, protocols, and technology requirements are all part of it, but of course is not the essential part. We ensure the project's visual identity while allowing the space to perform as needed and endure the required time. This, uh, this is, I mean, I guess this is the question that everybody's asking right now, right? Specifically after Latin building and what we saw, Kasambi, everybody is talking about Kasambi. I mean, there are very big changes, obviously, that we all know are going to happen. The start, start, and... Um, it started with um, the eruption of the LED. I mean, LED gave us a perspective or changed pretty much everything about lighting. It became digital. And in the moment that technology becomes digital, it's controllable, right? Versus electrical, uh, which is on, off, and that's it. So uh, from that point of view until now, much time has already passed. I would say it's probably a decade. We can use LEDs on really, really well um, as light fixtures. So controls were, were only a matter of time that they really caught up to that. And I think that's where the main um, 
the main revolution will come on how um, information gets gathered and used in a way. Uh, we have already examples through um, some testings that we've seen where um, we're being observed, for example, at a window shop and then the display uh, starts giving you information depending on where you look or how long you look. Um, there are talks on how lighting will interpret your mood and will allow you to come home without doing anything and you know be a soft uh, soft lighting if you're really upset and things like that right i mean i'm not sure how far that can go but definitely within the the, the mass market which might be supermarkets retail things like that um i think it's a conversion of uh, data and how that's going to be used uh, with lighting that will make a big impact. Uh, on a personal note, I would, however, hope that more biological research combined with, hol with a holistic approach is done and shared concerning the infinite ways that light influence our body, behavior, and health, although I doubt that the market will permit it. I mean, basically, what we would love to work on, if we had the chance, was a project where human health could be explored through lighting within, for example, a retreat facility. I'm thinking something very, very specific with specific needs. I mean, not, oh, this will do the... No, when you go to a retreat, for example, um, which are different within Europe or Western culture and Asian culture, um, you expect to come out a certain way, right? So for light to be part of that process, that's what we would love to do on, on a short period of time, obviously. So um, we've had lots of fun actually with many projects, but I would maybe call out two of our latest projects that we feel have been um, Quite exciting for different reasons. One is the zoo, uh, which is um, the zoo is a live dinner experience restaurant uh, that had a great team, um, lots of different disciplines. So we had to work with uh, interior designer, architect, engineer, like most lighting design jobs, and then we had a theatrical lighting designer. Uh, but then we had. Um, the in-house team for the show, who also was very much part of part of the project. Um, yeah, so I mean that was a very peculiar project for us. Um, great one because theatrical and architectural lighting work within the same space, and the team was fantastic. I mean the result it was lots of fun, uh, and I think the result shows that that would be one of them. And then the other one is um is actually a commercial center, the Centro Comercial de Diagonal Mar, which is here in Barcelona. It had an extremely tight budget. I mean, let's just say it what it is. Uh, and this led us to develop, together with architect and interior designer, um, a lighting scheme with five repetitive systems that identified, illuminated, and played with the space, having a spectacular final result. But it was a very peculiar lighting system that we had to combine. Uh, to make it happen. During my career, I overcame many challenges, but the biggest one as of today involves loss. In 2017, my dad passed away after a very distressing disease, and shortly after that, one of our team members passed away tragically from one day to the other. Losing someone close has proven to be the hardest experience to incorporate into my life. In both instances, on the professional front, many things needed to be done as it was a very busy time. And the support of my collaborators was fundamental to go forward when my and their heart were broken. I want to take this chance to thank my team for their continuous engagement and humanity. Um, I was very lucky to have two great, I mean, many great teachers, but some of them I still remember greatly. One was uh, James Carpenter, 
Uh, he, I was lucky enough that he was at that point teaching at Parsons uh, together with um, Mr. Norris, uh, the daylighting expert, which was amazing. Uh, Cho Lian um, on the design and project point of view. Uh, then when I started working, Barbara Horton, who became my mentor a long time after I, I um, finished. I mean, I did my first internship with her, actually, in, in New York. And Scott Matthews, with whom I uh, at Branson Partnership. Light is a, a completely unexpected, playful, beautiful material that we need to cherish and that we are lucky to enjoy every day. Professionally, you never know exactly how the project will turn out until everything is built and the switch has been turned on. And that's still something. No, I'm serious. I still can't sleep. Yeah. The, the night before. Yeah. Um, this tension. How is it going to look? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, after all these years and projects, I mean, I still have that. The struggle for gender equality in labor transcends the confines of lighting design and architecture. For this reason, I thank you for promoting ventures like this one, Women in Lighting Design, and support the work of one another. The new generation of lighting designers include many women, and I hope that with everybody's work, they will be able to start their profession every day a bit better. I'm not sure if I would if I would narrow it down to lighting. I would just say two women do what you want to do. Not in a slogan way, but truly understanding and supporting your emotional and intellectual self.